if you watched our last video uh, that we put out, I cleaned uh, some of our land, ready for sowing seed, and I sowed the seed. Um, and I did that because we had several days of quite heavy rain, um, which is perfect for, for sowing seed, helps it start to grow. Um, the days after I planted the seed, no more rain. So unfortunately we lost this, which is our large rotating sprayer in the fire. Uh, you can see it's quite, maybe you can't see it in the thing there, but it's absolutely distorted and melted. But thankfully the tripod and the tube that feeds it down here is still okay. Um, obviously the pipe fittings and everything else that were on it were completely burnt. So I've had to buy more pipe and a new head. I'm gonna fit this on here now. So I hopefully in the next day or two, I can go out and I can start irrigating the, uh, the land there, which brings me on to my next point. We've had quite a few messages from people uh, through emails and our Facebook and also comments left on uh, on our YouTube videos and this is one of the people that left a comment asking if I'd explain a little bit more about the laws regarding the fires. Uh, so I'm going to have to start using my petrol water pump to use this machine here, this sprayer. I'll, uh, I'll go and show you now what all the fire laws mean. I'll show you the website that you can use to check it and I'll try and explain a little bit more about some of the explanations that they give on the legitimate site because some of it's very awkward to understand, it's almost contradictory but because I know the local firemen and I know the local sapadoras I've been and I've asked them to confirm some of the parts and points there um, which they've done for me and I'm hoping I can pass that on to you. This is one of the messages we received on our YouTube channel Funnily enough, it was actually put in the video we made about the electric bike rather than the, uh, the video you can see here in the background, which was called Fire Fire, which is the one where we built a, uh, a water defence pump. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link up at the top of the screen for you go and have a look at that. And this is Al H who left me a comment saying, Hi Alex, could you do a video a little bit more in depth regarding the use of power tools streaming before 11am in the morning with yellow amber warnings? and how you get that information on a daily basis. Does it differ between regions, say Castello Branco, neighbouring Port Alegre? I think viewers would be interested in this subject. Best wishes to you all. So yes, of course, I'm happy to help anybody out. So on your computer, open up Google, and you want to search IPMA, and that will bring up the Institute Portuguese de Mar da Atmosferia. So if you click that, It'll bring up their page, which is here. And what you can do, Fogas Rurais, as you can see, the page is in Portuguese at the moment. But what we can do is you can click to the top right of the screen up here, English, and that changes it to here. And then you can see along the top here, rural fires. You've got them for the mainland rural fire danger or for the island Madeira. So click the mainland. That will bring up a map here, which you can enlarge to find the zone where you live. We're obviously in the Castello Branco region, which is here. So I'm going to click that. And as you can see today, we're on maximum. It's got a couple of more days you can click through, still telling you that it's getting to the maximum. And on the right here, it gives you the temperatures, the wind, how much rain is expected. Obviously, that's completely blank because we're living in Portugal. And it's giving you a legend here of what things mean. And those and the colours here, the red, green and brown, or grey rather, they are listed here on this symbol here. And that's telling you at the moment because it's at the maximum, all these things here are banned. Doesn't look like a lot of information. So what you want to do is look down here and there's a red bar at the bottom on the right here and we can click that and it'll open up another page here which let me enlarge that a little bit to make it easier for you to see agricultural burning or land clearing and on the right hand side here it is telling you that on the low moderate and high where they're gray you can have what it says and it says on very high or maximum risk days extensive burnings are prohibited on other days, these are only permitted with authorization from the municipality. So this is talking about burning waste on your land. So when you look to the right here, it's saying the first three settings up to high 
you can have them, but as it states, you need authorization and you must register any fire um, <clears throat> before you can have it. They might actually tell you with one of those grey days, no, you can't do it because at the moment it's just too risky. The general area is just too brown and crispy. On the, on the last, it's very high and maximum. There's absolutely no way you're not doing it. States very clearly here throughout the year, you're only permitted to carry out burning of cut and piled up waste with authorization or with prior notification. And it says here you can register that on the Kemas Ekemadas. And if you click that, it'll take us to another page here. There is a phone number you can call them, but there is actually an app you've got on your phone which you can install and you can do it via an application on your on your phone now. So Let's get back to here, machinery and equipment. So this is for cleaning your land. Every, every tractor now must have a fire extinguisher of at least six kilograms, which I've got on mine. Um, and it must have spark or protective devices in the exhaust, except in the case of chainsaw strimmers and other small portable machines. You can use them in the very high days. It's quite confusing this. It says on very high or maximum risk days, it's prohibited to carry out work using strimmers, scrub, scrub clearing machinery and shredders. So it says here on very high or maximum risk days, it's prohibited. But it does say on other days, there are no restrictions to use the machinery. So again, if we go to the top of this page. You can see the last two on the very right hand side are very high and maximum. But what seems to be a bit of a contradiction is it says here on very high or maximum risk days from 11 hours in the morning until sunset, it is prohibited to use agriculture and forest machinery. Basically anything that makes a spark. But between sunset and 11 a.m. in the morning, so basically you can work throughout the night past midnight until 11 o'clock in the morning, you can use these machines on, as it says on the right here, above the red symbols, look, it says 11, 11. You can use them. And we're talking about rural applications applicable in rural areas and in the surroundings of built up areas. And I'll explain what rural and urban built up areas means. Bonfires and other types of fires. On very high or maximum risk days, the building of bonfires for recreational, recreational leisure on a context of popular festivities is prohibited. Well, I think that's pretty obvious. A lot of people want to have barbecues and things like that. Well, you can't on very high or maximum days. You can't do it. On very high or maximum risk days, the use of stoves or barbecues, unless used in places designed for that purpose, is prohibited. Now, places designed for that purpose here Oh, uh, we've got one of the church at the, at the top of our village and it's a purpose built concrete area with barbecues inside them and covers over the top and chimneys. I still feel that sometimes even there where our one is, it's surrounded by woodland. So even to me, it seems daft using it, but legally you can. Now, this is applicable only to rural areas. Now, Rural is anywhere surrounded by grassland. We live one and a half kilometers from the village. We are a rural area. The village itself is an urban area because it's a built up village. There's a lot of concrete and tarmac and things like that around preventing the risk of sparks jumping from your barbecue and catching light to your grass. I can watch people in my village have a barbecue but me, I'm uh, one kilometre away, one and a half kilometres away from the village. I'm not allowed to have a barbecue because I'm rural. So any of you coming out here buying small bits of land uh, and small little farms, unless you are right on in the village, which 99% of us don't buy land like that out here. We like to be out in the away from people. You are a rural area and you're not allowed barbecues on the maximum days. The same with uh, the use of uh, forestry equipment. Access and traffic floats. Technically, you're prohibited from driving through the forest. Now, when I asked my friends the other day, I said, so what, what is it about um, the driving through the forest? It's not so much because they think you're going to cause a fire. It's actually because the dust that you will lift up. 
Don't take that as, oh, if I drive slowly in the forest, I'll be all right. You won't. If the GNR catch you driving in the forest on a maximum day, you're going to get fined. Um, and rightly so, really. I mean, that's just daft. These forests are so hot inside. It, you literally, you could drive over the grass in the middle of the path that you're driving down and the heat from your exhaust pipe would set the grass alight. So it's, it's not worth taking that risk. But it's mainly the dust that your vehicle creates when you drive down the road because you've got uh, viewpoints at strategic points around in Portugal with men and women sat there 24 hours a day with binoculars. And from a distance, when you see the dust come up from a fire track, it looks just the same as a fire starting. And then they unnecessarily call out their men and send them to drive out in the forest and check what it was. And obviously they don't find anything because you've been and gone. So that's the basics of this. It's the ICNF here, the Institution of Conservation of the Natural uh, Area and of Forests. So I hope that's given you some help into this. I think I've covered most of it. Uh, if I haven't and you've got any other questions or, or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment in the video below and I shall gladly answer you. I hope everyone stays safe against all these fires and I hope this will uh, help you in some way. I'll put a link to this in the, uh, in the description as well so you can click straight onto this website and, and uh, you can have a look for yourself. I just hope it helps you all a little bit. Like I say, if I've missed anything or you've got any questions, please leave some comments below and I shall answer. I hope you guys found that clip extremely interesting and if you did don't forget to give us a like but I would also like to mention a little more about the sapper doors. So the sapper doors are a bunch of people who clean the roads and help prevent fires and if there is a local fire in the municipality they are the first response for those fires so they are working from 5am until 6pm in the heat all day every day and unfortunately they don't have shading most of the time when they are in their lookout spots watching for these fires so we have set up a fund on the buy me a coffee app so if anyone would like to donate to buying some shading like a pop-up gazebo that they can collapse and take back with them i would really really appreciate that so thank you guys so much for watching this week's video don't forget to like subscribe and we will see you back here next week